And as I mentioned last week, if you are watching this dispatch on either YouTube, Facebook, or Rockfin, you will notice that this is only audio. You're not looking at my, my, my face, uh, my bearded mug. You're not looking at that right now. And that is because uh, I am currently uh, going through a bit of a transition from uh, from the River's Edge studio to a home studio, uh, which means that I have to get a few things, put a few things together to get this home studio up and ready to go. That is not there yet, still in transition, hence why this is uh, just the audio without any sort of uh, video component to it. But rest assured, the dispatches will be back to having both an audio and a video component uh, here shortly. But without any further ado, let's dive into this week's dispatch. Recently, all of American media wondered if Donald Trump was going to pull troops out of Afghanistan. And if he does, who will continue waging a war on terror? Okay, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but since the beginning of our war in Afghanistan, Iraq, Syria, Yemen, and Libya, amongst various other proxy wars, global terror has been down. Okay, as, as long as you ignore the terror the American military imposes on countries that don't want us there, and of course, the terror implemented by the militarized American police. As long as you ignore all of that and only focus your attention solely on the fact that brown people with beards and a phlegmy accent are the only causes of terror, America is nailing it against the war on terror. Look, Raytheon lobbyist and weapons pimp Mark Esper was recently fired by Trump from his position as the Secretary of Defense. His dismissal was seen as a possible exodus from Afghanistan. But don't worry, guys. His replacement, Christopher Miller, wants to turn Afghanistan into a glass-laden parking lot. Huh? You guys remember that old gem from the right-wingers when, when the Iraq War started? Huh? Well, we're bringing it back because trends in xenophobia and racism are cyclical. As Abby Martin of Empire Files reported, Miller is quoted to say, the war isn't over and we must avoid our past strategic failings to see the fight through the finish. But how do you finish an infinite war? I mean, does Christopher Miller know some kind of a secret to the universe that we don't know? That, that even, even someone like Neil deGrasse Tyson hasn't figured out? How do you end infinity? Oh man, what secrets does he possess? He possesses none. He, he does not know. And he's a war hawk willing to sacrifice the lives of the working class to ensure that a small amount of people stay rich while throwing out platitudes about victory and other nationalistic propaganda. Gasper was fired for his loyalty to Trump uh, to, to his desire to engage in a war with Iran. If we remember earlier this year, America assassinated one of Iran's top military leaders, General Soleimani, who was on a peace mission in Iraq. This is a leader that has led his troops into battle, defeating the terror group ISIS in Syria, especially when American troops were failing. A war with Iran would be catastrophic and would lead to the deaths of many more American citizens within the American military. Now, America has been flooding Iran with economic sanctions, which is basically economic wars, by cutting medical access to medical, access to medical supplies during a pandemic, proving yet again that American capitalism doesn't give a shit about human lives as long as it can prove that it's the best because, you know, daddy didn't hug it enough. Well, Maybe capitalism could have stopped trying to get its dad, Ayn Rand's, approval and it wouldn't feel the need to impose its militaristic might on countries that clearly said no. And maybe, maybe if it thought to help people like its friend socialism, people would want to come to its birthday parties more often. Also, stop charging a cover for your birthday parties, capitalism. Okay, it's in poor taste. FYI, Ayn Rand is both capitalism's mom and dad because that's how ruggedly individualistic she was. As Abby Martin reported, the Trump administration is putting new sanctions on Iran 
every week to destabilize its military capabilities. I'm fairly certain Iran's goals isn't to attack America in the midst of a global pandemic that they themselves are suffering from. But when American media validates Trump, the mascot of American capitalism, for bombing the shit out of countries in the Middle East, what more can you really expect? I mean, Iran has less nuclear capabilities than they did in 2015. So let's pretend it's daylight savings time and dial the nuclear clock back a little. The corporate media would like you to believe otherwise, right? Similarly to how they said Iraq had weapons of mass destruction. I mean, how many times before they cried WMDs till the people say, shut the fuck up, American media. Now, America has sold over $23 billion in weapons to the United Arab Emirates, or the UAE, a dictatorial monarchy with a hatred for Iran. Look, and this makes perfect sense, because who knows how to defend freedoms and liberties more than a dictatorial monarch? And, and, and if you don't say a dictatorial monarch, you, you will be put to death in the town square. Now, there are about 60 some odd days till Biden's inauguration at the date of this recording. And he did pen an op-ed uh, on CNN about what to do about Iran. And really, if he wanted Trump to see it, he would have gone to Fox News and broke it down. But, but we can't really let Biden on TV too much because you know, the subject of black America and his record might come up and he'd lose it on national television. Now, Biden claims that he will prevent Iran from having nuclear weapons. First of all, what makes America the arbiter of nuclear weapons? Because we're willing to use them first, right? As the saying goes, first is the worst, second is the best. Oh, ah, shit. Okay, that's right. We were, we were also the, the second in using nuclear weapons. Okay, it had seemed that every other nation that hasn't used, like, we're the only nation that has ever used a nuclear weapon. So maybe the rest of the world should be trying to put sanctions on us for the sake of safety. Now, if he was really worth his salt as a diplomat and a peacekeeper, Biden would call for nuclear disarmament globally. And if Iran says they are responsible enough to have a nuclear weapon, then what? Does that mean that after criticizing Trump for bringing America into the brink of another war, Biden is going to get even brinkier with a war with Iran? The hypocrisy doesn't end there. Biden wants the release of innocent political prisoners from Iran. And this is coming from the soon-to-be leader of a nation that is holding a journalist as a political prisoner. If Biden wants to stand true with the release of political prisoners, he would start with pardoning Julian Assange, move then to Chelsea Manning and Edward Snowden, and wrap it up by pardoning all of the imprisoned Black Panthers. And he'd end with putting himself and every architect of these endless wars in prisons for committing crimes against humanity with their endless wars for profit. Now, Biden is saying that he's willing to lift sanctions that prevent Iran from fighting COVID-19, but it's keeping its sanctions on military operations. So if UAE decides that it wants to get into a firefight with Iran, the U.S. has put dollar bill sh shaped shackles on this country. Now, these sanctions are primarily in place to protect Israel. And yet again, we see Biden's hypocrisy of not escalating conflict when he's clearly chosen a side. It's like America is playing Middle East chess and Iran is the queen, right? And this brings a whole new meaning to the term war games. Now, Biden's plan is about making America great again through faux diplomacy and continued economic warfare. And how do you show the world that America is back on top? You use the only thing of real value in America the military and weapon sales. Both Biden and Trump are the perfect mascots of American capitalism. They're old, they're failing, they got rich by screwing over everyone else, and all they want to do is wage war and possibly also talk about their dicks. Thinking that peace will be achieved with a blue party in the White House is naive. Peace will only come when we reject both of these colors of war.
And that has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening to this show. If you want to make a financial contribution to the show, you can do so by becoming a sustaining member or making a one-time donation at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com slash donate. If you do become a sustaining member, you get unreleased stand-up comedy material that nobody else gets except for you guys, uh, weekly updates on all of the podcasts and videos that I put out, and early access to the full episodes of Forkful of Noodles that go up, and uh, and videos of the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows when they do get recorded, so you guys get access to all that, and free tickets to shows. Holy shit, why wouldn't you become a sustaining member? Uh, go over to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. While you're there, while you're on my website, you can download my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, you can uh, check out past episodes of this show, past episodes of Forkful of Noodles and Road Reflections. Uh, you can subscribe to my email list. Once a week, I send out an email letting people know uh, what's going on with me, all the videos, all the podcasts that I've dropped for the week so you have it in one place. And the best way to check out those videos is via Rockfin. Go to rockfin.com slash Krishmohan. Ha ha. Rockfin is a blockchain cryptocurrency site that is primarily focused on making sure that content creators get paid for their work and it fights the censorship that you get from YouTube and Facebook. So if you like my stuff, uh, you can subscribe for $10 a month and you you get access to everything that Graham Elwood puts out, Lee Camp puts out, Jimmy Dore, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, Nico House, a whole laundry list of progressive content creators out there. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for your support. If, if, if you enjoy this podcast, if you're a regular listener, make sure that you are subscribed to listen to this podcast on whatever network you like to listen to it on and leave us a review. As silly as it sounds, the reviews do help. It, it helps this podcast get discovered by new people. So those, those reviews, those likes, those shares all help out quite a bit. Thank you so much. And now onwards to the show.